What's up, Zox fam? Now we're going to be getting into our best three stars tier list. Now I wanted to do this to kind of give this uh, information, especially for those of you guys that are newer to the game or those that might not have realized that you have a hidden gem on your account. Uh, now, what we actually ended up doing with this tier list is we condensed the tiers a little bit uh, just to kind of emphasize, uh, for one, these are three stars, uh, but then also to just, again, for any unit that is placed in the uh, double S um, tiering, these are typically going to be your units that are just extremely valuable uh, when looking at in-game content um, and they can work for a vast majority of different things uh, if you need certain slots filled uh, all really depends though right uh, but for the remainder of the tier list any units that are placed in s are just pretty decent you can use them in their respective you know piece of content um, i would say in a tier those units are okay they can be used in certain niche areas uh, and then b tier are, are more than likely units you just really want to invest in slim to no investment just overall right so let's go ahead and get into our placements here now the first unit we're going to be placing which is an obvious double s is going to be drew uh, now drew i feel like has a crazy amount of value to a early mid game and end game players account uh, he is going to be again a very very high in value character uh, after his reso change um, he is going to be able to heal after he kills now he grants himself speed when he kills an enemy and and then just the simple fact that he can kill potentially three units at one time is just kind of insane, uh, considering that he is a natural three star unit. Uh, he does offer defense break. And then, of course, with his massive damage, uh, he just is a huge asset to any player's account. Right uh, now, the next unit we're going to be placing is uh, GERD. Uh, now, GERD, we're going to be placing her in S tier. Now, I feel like for what GERD brings to the table, she does do a decent amount. Uh, now, she is able to stun on all three of her abilities um and i would say her reso change wasn't super out of the way or didn't really like you know make her too crazy but for what her kit is worth uh she is a pretty solid unit for just using an early game pvp um definitely has a lot of value in pve even um i definitely would say that the fact that she can cc on all three of her abilities is just kind of disgusting and then with each cc she is able to do different things so i think on her s2 she's able to steal ap i think 30 percent um on the s3 she's able to dispel so that ends up being like a huge thing as well um just when you're looking at overall utility that a character is able to give now another unit that we're going to be placing in the i would say i would honestly give her the double s i honestly feel like she's high in value is going to be melanie I feel like Melanie was a character, even um, as of late on my endgame account, I still was able to utilize for even clearing things like Kronos. Um, I feel like Melanie is a hidden gem in a lot of ways, and it's nice that they put her back in the gotcha because not many people really aim for her because she was inside of the club shop and you had to use club points. Um, and using those club points over getting op boxes just really didn't make sense. But Melanie definitely is a really powerful Esper. Uh, she is able to AP pushback aoe um but not only is she able to ap pushback uh but she also has a opportunity to be able to petrify which is under her passive now um this is going to be applicable if the character is below 30 percent ap on the bar um and the thing about petrification that is so powerful is that petrification not only allow doesn't allow the character to be able to take their turn but it also doesn't allow them to be able to reduce their ability cooldowns now a lot of people don't know that that's the big difference between petrify uh stun and uh freeze is that petrify ends up being one of the strongest ccs in the game because it does not allow a character to be able to reduce their ability cooldowns which is just kind of insane uh now she is also able to speed down and then she also has a speed lead right so 50 percent speed lead might not seem like much but for any player that doesn't have like a long neon or you're just starting out and you're just trying to get you know your account allocated and you know kind of situated she ends up giving you a lot of value um then of course with her reso change they do allow her to be able to ignore uh, resistance now which is kind of a nice plus uh for her to be able to potentially ap push back a lot easier uh now another unit that we're going to be placing in and, and you know what's crazy this dude gets so much hate but i feel like he is so freaking invaluable uh is going to be uh q we're going to be placing him i feel like i feel like q i'm going to place him in Ah, this one is a little tough because I, I I get it, but I also don't get it. I mean, all right, we're gonna place Q in. 
I would say double S. I, I, I'm going to give it to him. Right, the, re the reason why I would say this is because Q, for one, is a freebie character that you get, right? Uh, but Q it actually has a lot of value because of his damage linking ability. He's also able to proc a defense down and a attack down in his kit. Uh, and then with the rezzo changes that he got, um, he is able to do a little bit more damage. If he is able to kill an enemy, he also gets a speed increase as well, just uh, similar to Drew. Um, but the biggest thing that he offers in his kit is that damage link um and the thing is is that with that damage link it allows you to be able to deal true damage um about 80 percent true damage which is a massive amount when you're talking about being able to kill two units at one time um it is just insane so you really at that point you're able to hit one unit and kill the reciprocating counterpart which is just kind of disgusting now outside of that he might not be utilized in everything but whenever a cheese comp shows or presents itself q is like all up in the mix of that because damage link is by far a ridiculous ability and i would think the devs would have learned that by now but i don't know <laughs> i don't think so so yeah that's going to be pretty much that for the homie drew now the next unit we're going to be placing is going to be lauren uh lauren is actually going to be going into s tier for me um i feel like she is still a valuable unit i don't feel like she's as broken as she used to be and actually you know what i'm going to be shifting her down i'm going to put her in a tier i feel like she does have her uses um not as crazy as she used to be but she does have her uses now lauren can actually revive um now that's a thing that you're just not going to be seeing coming out of any other three star in the game um and there's really only a, a, a hand selected few units in the entire game that do that all together now she can revive or she can decide to heal a target it all really depends on what's going on in that run uh, she is also able to uh, ap push but this is at the cost of her own hp so that's just kind of one of those like offsets that she has um, which makes her like kind of inefficient in comparison to some of the other units that are able to revive now with her rezzo changes um it really didn't like do so much with her her like being just like this god tier unit or anything like that it does allow her to be able to um have an increase of her speed when allies aren't alive uh, and then she also got a healing boost as well when the, when her hp threshold is lower but it wasn't anything super super game changing um i would definitely say she used to have a lot more value but she did get nerfed and that's one thing i had to remind myself of as to why i wouldn't necessarily place her in s tier um but again she does have her uses now, um, another unit we're going to be placing, um, and I would say definitely has value uh, for sure out of the three stars, is going to be Freddy. I feel like for a three star DPS, that single target, Freddy is definitely going to be an easy go to for a lot of people. Because again, when you're looking at the value of starting out on a fresh account, even um, he's definitely going to be extremely powerful with how he is able to operate. Uh, and for some time, he actually was a stronger counterpart to Ares. Like a lot of people were actually building Freddy over Ares because he was just that better, that much better. Now, for what he's able to do, um, he is able to deal a ridiculous threshold. I think like 260% attack damage. Um, he's able to dispel two buffs with his Rezos. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, for every 10% of HP he loses, he's also able to deal an additional 5% uh, damage, which is just absolutely ridiculous. He can also grant himself attack up and standoff, which allows him to be able to be an extremely like tanky, just annoying unit that you have no choice but to dispel if you want to get rid of him at that point, um, opponent. Now, on top of that, he is also able to um per, uh, perform a pursuit attack with his s1 um as he deals damage um and this is when his hp is below 50 percent he is able to then grant himself a 30 percent crit rate boost and ignore 20 percent defense so it is honestly a lot better than what he used to be too because again for what it's worth with the rezo changes that he got um it also increases his basic ability damage too so that was actually a pretty solid one for him to get um but he already does pretty nice damage anyway now the next unit we're going to be placing is david now david for me i place him in b tier i i really i really just dislike this character and it's not even just because of the fact it's david but it's just how he works i feel like his kit is just weird and you're just not really going to find too many scenarios at all where you would be just like hey i'm gonna use david <laughs> i should have thought about using david like <laughs> you're just not gonna do that at all now he is able to stun with his s3 he has the ability to be able to taunt as well and he can perform an attack down um but outside of that it's really not anything super 
super like game changing in my opinion especially for three stars that you could decide to invest in he just isn't one of those units now um the next unit we're going to be looking at is going to be anki cha now anki cha easily is a double s unit for me he is the ultimate skill cooldown battery coming out of the three star rarity um and i definitely would say is a worth investing unit uh for anyone that is trying to be um a successful at desolate lands early game anki cha is absolutely a broken character he's also a really good substitute if you don't have the skill cooldowns on your characters he definitely helps out immensely with that so i would definitely say that he is a high in value character that you want to pick up and invest in if you do get him um his resolute change um, allow him to also get a speed increase if he has an ability on cooldown which is the hasty aka hasty action which is really really freaking good so definitely a unit that i would say if you get him you build him all right now another unit that i would say he's pretty decent for what it's worth is leon i'm going to be placing him in a tier uh he's a pretty a pretty decent single target uh dps um is he going to be like your end all be all like a drew not necessarily uh he works for what it's worth i would say um he is able to also proc seer so that allows him to be able to not only deal more damage himself but also any allies that's with him it's a 25 percent or 25 percent damage increase um and on top of that uh, he is also able to transfer debuffs um from himself to a target and then he can also proc disease so if you are looking for a disease character this is a unit that you can take advantage of and utilize that would be a huge asset for you to um you know kind of run now the next unit we're going to be placing is going to be tang yuan all right, so Tang Yuan, we're going to be placing easily into double S. I would definitely say that this is a must invest three star for any account, really. Um, he is going to be a huge high end value character for uh, Fafnir. You can use him in Desolate Lands. He is definitely a solid unit. And even for a while, was the better version of Sun Wukong up until the resonant changes that just were implemented. Now, the thing that makes him so broken is that he is able to pretty much infinitely uh potentially pursuit attack now there is no direct number on um how many times he can pursuit attack it is just a percentile of how many of, of the chance of it procking and so i've seen my tang yuan uh proc up to nine times which is just insane for any individual character to go um and i mean not only is he killing characters but it's also giving him the opportunity to be able to cc with his s1 uh then with his s2 he has the opportunity to ignore defense 40 percent and then with the s3 um, when he crits this also gives him the opportunity to pretty much guarantee himself a pursuit attack which again will loop back into him ccing his kit is just really nice um for the looping of it it works really really well with itself um and then of course when an ally dies he does get a crit damage increase as well so that does kind of help out with his resonates but definitely a very very high in value character out of the three stars as well now the next character we're going to be placing is going to be man I, I feel so bad every time i place this unit is bryn all right so bryn is going to be getting placed in b tier um unfortunately as the main protagonist she doesn't really offer much in your account and you can literally get rid of her as soon as you start the game um she is going to be a, a freeze unit or cc unit with a defense down she is able to grant an attack up buff to the entire party and can do a speed down to her s1 um unfortunately the rezo changes didn't really do anything for her outside of giving her a base stat increase um she doesn't really offer really much i mean it's just kind of unfortunate i'm hoping in the future she gets a five star variant and they just you know honestly give a little bit more cadence to the damn three star version of her and they buff her i mean can we just get a main protagonist mo like main protag buff please that <laughs> i don't know i don't know why but yeah so she's in b tier unfortunately and that's just kind of that for where she's um, going to be laid. Uh, now, the next unit is going to be Layla. We're going to be placing her in B tier. Uh, Layla is, again, another one of those units that is super, super just here like she doesn't really offer much um she is able to poison and disease so if you are looking for a unit for a disease she can be another slotted unit uh, she is able to cc or stun on her s1 uh, and then of course being able to also inflict poison on the s3 aoe um but you're really not going to have too many pieces of content where layla will be coming to the forefront as some major like groundbreaking or ground you know or game changing unit unfortunately so that's where she's going to go now the next unit up is yesi 
Yesihua. Yesihua is going to be placed in our double S tier. Now, Yesihua is definitely a, a game changing unit. Um, she, for a reason, is and has been a unit that was placed into the Ripple and it was such a tedious process to be able to farm her. Now, what she's actually offering your entire comp is a attack up and defense up on the S3. She is also able to grant invincibility and recovery to one unit and as well as healing them in the same ability. And then she can also proc and attack down on the S1. Now, her Rezo changes definitely were really nice just for that base stat increase. Um, she was able to uh, grant herself a um, the ability of also being able to heal where her Rezo changes when she's buffing. So it made her S3 now able to heal as well. Um, and when we're looking at pieces of content that Yusihua is used in, she is literally used in a vast majority of important pieces of content, whether it be Temporal Tower, whether it be Story, whether it be Cube, whether it be pretty much every damn thing in the game you could think of. You can take her into a pep, you can take her into Kronos. She is just really freaking good. So definitely a character I would say you would want to bring into in-game and is definitely going to have value on your account. Now, um, the next unit that we have here is going to be Zelmer. Now, I would say with Zelmer, for a while, she was placed in a much higher tier, but they have since nerfed her. So I would definitely say that Zelmer, I would give her for what she is able to do. Uh... I would say Zelmer would be an A rank unit for me. Um, I think Zelmer does have some value in certain things. She is able to defense break with her S1. She is able to bleed with her S2. And then her S3 was really like the bread and butter of her kit. Uh, you paired her with um, Q and they were able to like cheese Fafnir, but uh, that has some been, <laughs> since been nerfed. Um, so she doesn't hit as hard as she used to. There really wasn't like a damage parameter before uh, for her S3, but now it is. Um, and and I would definitely say Zelmer isn't super, super game changing, but she can be a little bit of a nuisance as a nuke in certain scenarios, um, but not super crazy or game changing, I would say. Uh, now, the next unit we're going to be placing is going to be Barden. I'm going to be placing him in S tier, uh, and there is a reason for that. Um, he is actually pretty annoying in RTA, believe it or not. Um, there have been some people that have been running around with Bardens uh, in RTA, and he does pretty well. I would say for the way his kit is, um, he also is a pretty huge asset for retaliations um with his retaliation um of his s1 he is also able to potentially stun a target um he is able to grant a defense up with his um s3 as well uh and then of course he is also able to ta um to taunt so this can make him the focal point of dps or damage coming from the reciprocating team um but he is definitely a unit that you would probably see more so in pvp uh, more than you would see in pve but he definitely can hold his value when you're talking about a meat shield that could just take all of the focus off of the team and just being able to really honestly take advantage of that. And even in like situations in RTA, his damage isn't that bad, which is kind of annoying um, to be quite honest. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, the next one we're going to be placing is going to be by Lu Lee. Uh, by Lu Lee, I'm going to actually be placing her in, I would give her... And I feel like this is because I, I still th I, I still feel like she's underrated, but I'm going to place her in a tier. I feel like, again, for what it's worth, she does a job, but she doesn't really do it as well as she could. Uh, so she is able to uh, buff eat or buff steal um, with her S3. Uh, her passive allows her to also be able to heal and dispel debuffs off of all of her allies. So it's one um, debuff, though. So she's kind of like a baby, uh, I would say, queen mother, if you want to kind of look at it that way. Uh, and then she's also able to silence with her S1. So by Lua Lee is not a bad unit. Um, um, definitely a lot better than some of the other units that are here on the list um, but she doesn't really do her job as well as she potentially could so there's just kind of that part to it um, which is just again it's just kind of that now uh, Berenice is going to be our next unit we're going to be placing uh, Berenice is going to be going into double S now Berenice is going to be a unit that is going to have high value in Fafnir um, and I would say definitely can be considered the best shielding unit in the game now for what it's worth the best thing about 
about her is that it's super easy to build her. Uh, her HP scaling shield, um, again, with her rezzle change, they gave her more chill strength as well. Um, this allows her to really just be stacked with HP and speed, and she gives you everything you need at that point. Uh, she is also able to grant your entire party a recovery um, as well, because then on top of that, that's going to give you passive healing. Um, but this is a really nice offset in things like Fafnir, where you get proc with disease, where you're able to take it, uh, take advantage of that, and you're able to then give shield coverage so that your team doesn't die. So she's really, really good at that. Now, the next unit we're going to be placing is Liao. Liao, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this, this piece of glob. I'm going to give him a ring. And, and this is simply because he is used as an isolation unit in RTA. Um, now, with that, again, that's another PvP thing. But outside of that in PvE, he's not that great. I mean, he really would be B tier. But because he does have that S3 where he is able to isolate any unit on the field, um, it really does become an extremely powerful thing. Because if you thought you was about to use a unit and you let Liao get ahead, it's going to be GG for you. Now, the other thing is, too, is that he does have a speed lead. So that is something worth considering when you're looking at lower rarities who typically do not have speed leads, um, but he is high in value uh, there. Now, the next unit we're going to be placing is actually going to be Hall. Now, Hall has a lot of value, I would say, out of the three stars, especially at this point, uh, because he's not only a slotted unit for uh, Sentinel Hunt, but he also works extremely well in Fafnir. So I feel like for the value of a poison unit, he definitely has high value in comparison to a lot of other counterparty units that are poison, like Layla, for example. Um, he definitely does his job extremely well. He is able to follow up a attack of any of his allies um, and with that, he, it allows him to be able to poison, which then equates to more D DPS or damage um, or dot damage, if you want to call it that. Right. Um, and that just overall ends up being an extremely valuable thing, even on things like Sentinel Hunt, which he is still utilized as a end game slotted unit for first teams um, or first wave runs in Sentinel Hunt. Now, the next unit we're going to be placing is going to be Chalmers. Now, Chalmers is definitely a, <laughs> and it's kind of weird because he's a three-star, but I would say he's almost kind of slotted to be a in-game unit. Um, I would say that he is easily a, S a double S-tier unit um, out of all the three-stars in terms of high-end value. Um, the reason why this is, though, is because he is the only three-star, if I'm not mistaken, that does HP percent DPS. And when I say he can hit hard, he can hit freaking hard now not only is this hp percent damage going to scale off of the enemy's hp but it's also going to be based off of the attack that he has um up to 300 which is ridiculous now he is also able to buff block um on top of that he can proc disease and his s1 also does hp uh, scaling damage as well his resolute changes weren't super out of the way to make him super broken or anything like that uh, but it does allow him to give ally dps increase and he is able to do true damage if the ally or the sorry the enemy has more hp um than him which is super super huge right now um the next unit we're going to be placing is going to be chong pu and chong pu is going to be another unit that we're going to be placing into i would say honestly the double s i feel like for the value of what she brings to the table um she is going to be a pretty good investment for early game going into mid game and even into late game to some degree i feel like once you get another unit of sorts like you know if you get gabby or if you have gabby or if you get hung yue um then she kind of sort of starts to fall off and especially once you get sally it's just kind of gg for Changpu, but she is still going to offer a lot of value. Her healing does scale off of attack, which is definitely different in comparison to a lot of other characters. Um, but she is going to offer you AoE immunity, AoE heal, and then of course a really powerful single target heal and a really nice AP pushback in her S1. Now, uh, the last unit we're going to be placing here is going to be Helena. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm going to be placing Helena in B tier. I still feel like for what it's worth, she's a, a unit you can kind of get away with. I did use her in my early game progression, um, just kind of in the very, very, very beginning to kind of sustain for heals. Um, so she's not like all bad when you kind of think about it. But if you get Changpu, you're going to immediately replace Helena, which is just kind of that thing. Um, and Helena does offer um, the ability of being able to uh, AoE heal. Um, and on top of that, she can also 
uh, reduce enemies AP. So she does have some capabilities that could be decent for PVE for like story maybe. But when you start looking at other pieces of content, she's really not going to have too much value there. But that's pretty much going to be that for the three stars. Uh, we will have some more videos getting into the four stars. And then of course, uh, the overall tier list is primarily focused on the five stars. But if you want to see a video on the five stars, definitely let me know. Um, but the next one we'll be getting into tier list wise, at least will be four stars. But that's pretty much going to be that for this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.